Voxwave now features a streaming radio media player on our website's front page where local artists can get their music played 24-7. For more information on getting your music in rotation or to perform live at our studio, contact Reg Gaskins at 240-832-4455. Android users, the VoxWave app is now available in the Google Play Store. Download the app today on your Android device to listen in and view programs. Business owners, looking for a place to advertise your business and promote your products and services? VoxWave is the right place. We have over 10,000 views a day and 70,000 listeners a month. For more information, contact Reg Gaskins at 240-832-4455. The world's number one streaming music station, Voxwave.com. We have your favorite shows on Voxwave.com. Check out our lineup. The Kim Show, Mondays, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. In the end, we win with Curtis, Mondays, 8.15 p.m. to 9.15 p.m. Cooking with Flavors with your host, Chef Flavors, Tuesday, 5.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Slick Daddy Rick, Heartbeat Congo Hour, Tuesday, 8 to 10 p.m. Impact the World Radio TV Show with Cheryl Woods, Wednesday, 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. The Digital Digest with your host, Digital Ace, Wednesdays, 3 to 5 p.m. Live Set Wednesdays with your host, Frank Dent, Wednesdays, 8 to 9 p.m. The BGKH Show with your hosts, Dominion and Epic, Wednesdays, 9.15 to 10.15 p.m. You, Math, and Me with George Randall, Thursdays, 10 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Then, on Thursdays at 5.30 p.m., The Prayer, Praise, and Deliverance with Elder Thurman Gorman, Jr. The 6.40 Evening Show, Thursdays, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. The Peace in the Morning Show with your host Darius A. Stan, co-host Delicate Daryl Barnes, and Queen Ayakadobi, Fridays, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. The Hall Street Journal with your host Robert Hall and co-host Clarence Sanders, Fridays, 10.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Frank, The Success Principles, Friday, 12 noon to 1 p.m. Chanel's Three Cents, Friday, 1.30 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. The Daryl Allen Harrison II Crime Victims Foundation Show, hosted by Daryl Harrison II, every Friday from 3 to 4.30 p.m. The Rush Hour with DJ Drew and Janique, every Friday from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Different Minds Show, hosted by DJ Bam640 and DJ Andre Michael, and your co-host, MC Fran, every Friday, 9.15 p.m. to 11.15 p.m. The Healer Blue Show, with host Ron Jackson, every Saturday, 8 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. Hour of Power, with your host, Reverend Winters Rogers, every Saturday, 9.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. And again, the prayer, praise, and deliverance with Elder Thurman Gorman Jr., Saturday, 11 p.m. to 12 p.m. And don't forget Four Sisters Live Talk, Saturday at 12.30 to 2.30 p.m. Turning dreams into reality talk show with your host, Tashika L. Green, every second Saturday, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Walk in newness 24-7 with Missionary Antoinette, Saturdays, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. News, ULN, news and analysis, information, sports, and black history. With your news anchor, Roderick Carter Willis, 4.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Step your game up with the Youth Project, hosted by DJ Main and DJ Lo Hefe, Saturday, 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. And don't miss The To Go Show with Kim Brown, Saturdays, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. I am Dr. Sharon Show, each Sunday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., featuring the grind, Entrepreneur Network Spotlight, and write the book now. The Riri Williams Show, Fashion and Style Hour, every first Sunday from 3 to 4 p.m. Real Talk 101, Sundays 6 to 8 p.m. And every third Sunday from 3 to 4 p.m., the third Sunday Tea Talk Show with Dr. Akita Pearson. Gospel Live TV Show with host Gloria Mello each Sunday from 8.15 p.m. to 9.15 p.m. 
Listen to all your favorite shows on VoxWave.com. VoxWave.com. VoxWave.com, streaming your favorite jazz, blues, and R&B 24-7. Welcome to, amen, the prayer, praise, and deliverance broadcast on VoxWave.com with yours truly, Elder Thurman Gorman, Jr. Truly, we thank and praise God for, amen, his goodness. We thank and praise God, amen, just for being here, amen, and we're excited this morning, amen, for the goodness of God, amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice, and we will be glad in it, amen, and we're just giving God the praise for all that he has done. We thank God for the Lord bringing us through another week. Amen. The Lord keeping us from all hurt, harm, and danger. Amen. The Lord protecting our families. Amen. For the Lord providing our each and our every need. Amen. For this, we owe God some praise. Amen. Hallelujah. And I just thank God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done. Amen. Because I realize that, amen, hallelujah, God doesn't have to do it. Amen. He doesn't know me anything, but it's the goodness of God. It's the goodness that is in his nature that he continues to bless us and he continues to do great things in our lives. So we're excited this morning. Amen. The Bible also, amen, tells us, amen, that in everything we ought to give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen. Also, the word of God says, and amen, we ought to acknowledge him in all of our ways and he will direct our path. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. And if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, he said, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal 
their land. Amen. For with this being said, let us bow our heads this morning. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity that you blessed us to be able to come on this broadcast this morning to live stream. Amen. All over the world to share the word of God. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for how you blessed us to rise early this morning clothed and in our right minds. We thank you for how you blessed us, Lord God, to keep our minds stayed upon you, Lord God. We just thank you for all things, Lord. We give you the praise, the honor, and we give you the glory. We thank you for our families yet being in the land of the living. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace, Lord. We thank you for your abundant mercy that is shed abroad in all of our lives. Now we're asking, Lord, that you will bless us as we gather here today. Oh God, we seek a word from you, God. You have the words of eternal life, Lord God, and we ask that you would anoint us, Lord God, to speak your word, Lord God, to speak a word, a fitting word for this season and this time. We ask that you would bless us now, that you would protect us, and that you would deliver us from all evil, Lord God, that you would bless the people of God. Even look on those that are convalescing in nursing facilities and hospitals and prison walls. Lord, we ask, Lord God, that the word of God would reach them on today that it would minister to their needs, O oh God. We ask that you would, Lord God, bless all those in attendance this morning. Lord God, feed and give us what we need, Lord God, that we may be encouraged to go all the way with you, Lord God. We ask these and all blessings in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and let everyone say, in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Again, we have a wonderful broadcast this morning. Amen. We are thanking God for Amen. This season, this time, amen. It is, amen. As man say Easter time and amen. As many, amen, want to, amen, recognize it as, amen, resurrection day. Amen. The day, amen, recorded in scripture that Jesus, amen, rose from the dead. And as we said before, on this hinges everything, amen, for the believer. Amen. For if Christ had not died and had not rose from the dead, we are yet in our sins. Amen. We are yet unsaved. Amen. We're yet on our way to a Christless hell. Amen. So we celebrate the resurrection. Amen. We celebrate the promise of God, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He came. Amen. He fulfilled all scripture. Amen. And he came and amen. He delivered us. Amen. From all of our sins. Amen. This morning, we want to draw your attention. Amen. To amen. The gospel according to Matthews. Amen. We're going to begin reading at the 21st verse. Amen. I wanted to amen. Focus in on Jesus. Amen. Triumphal entry. Amen. Because just on last Sunday, amen. We, and as many churches, they had Palm Sunday. And it is our job to make sure that you understand what you're doing, amen, when, amen, palms are giving, amen, they're just symbols of our praise, amen, and they are covered here in, amen, the text today, amen, so, amen, if you have a Bible and you're able to follow us, if not, we'll read from the Word of God, we're reading the King James Version of the Word of God, amen, again, it's the Gospel according to St. Matthew's, the 21st chapter, Amen. And we're going to begin reading, amen, at, amen, the first verse. And it says, And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethphage, unto the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied, and a coat with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. Amen. The Bible says, All this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Sion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee meek, and sitting upon an ass, and a coat the foil of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. And brought the ass and the coat and put on them their clothes and they sent him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way and others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. 
in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved saying, who is this? And the multitudes who said, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Amen. We thank God for, amen, Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem because in this he fulfilled scripture. Amen. That, amen, his, the king of, of Jerusalem was coming. Amen. And it, amen, depicted him. Amen. Riding upon, amen, a coat, the foil of an ass. Amen. And amen. When we get these, amen, palms on Sunday, amen, we are simply, amen, amen, reenacting or remembering, amen, how that they strew down their clothes and the palms. Amen. And those palms represented praise. Amen. Hallelujah. And we want to give God the praise. Amen. 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 I don't need a palm, amen, to, or a tree branch to represent my praise. Amen. I lift up my voice and my hands. Amen. And I clap my hands and I give God the praise because he is worthy to be praised. But we know that the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. <laughs> amen. Amen. It shows us allegorically what happened. Amen. And it shows us that they begin to praise and to recognize him as our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus came to fulfill all prophecy. And that is what this season is about. Amen. Jesus didn't just show up to die for our sins, but his prophetical mission begin in Jerusalem, in the book of Genesis. Amen. Amen. At the fall of man. Amen. The, uh, the Bible says that, amen, he went and amen, he went and uh, a, the Bible said that his heel would bruise the head of the serpent. Amen. So, amen, I'm standing because, amen, I'm feeling a little uncomfortable in the chair and I just wanted to stand here, amen, and to, amen, amen, to read these, uh, read the scriptures and to share them with you. So all that we see in the scriptures here, amen, were, amen, types and figures of the true, amen, and that is why we come together on Palm Sunday to praise God, amen, because this began, amen, the week before his his crucifixion. Amen. And also, amen, we want to cover today the, the seven last sayings of Christ and amen, the seven last days that Jesus, amen, how he been tabernacled here on earth before, amen, he was crucified was very important. Amen. It led up and it prepared him, amen, for, amen, what he was about to encounter. And, and you and I know, amen, that he suffered, amen, he bled and he died, but he had to be prepared, amen amen, for the mission that he was about to carry out, amen, so amen, I want to draw, amen, your attention back into the word of God, amen, to, amen, the book of, amen, John, the gospel according to St. John, amen, is where, amen, the scriptures, amen, that I want to share with you are coming from, amen, the gospel of, of, of John, the 19th chapter, Turn with us, amen, in the 26th and the 27th verse, amen, here we read, amen, the disciples, amen, Jesus speaking to his disciples concerning his mother doing his crucifixion, amen, he spoke to them and said, behold, amen, he told, he spoke to his mother and said, behold, thy son, and he spoke to his disciples and said, behold, thy mother, amen, also, amen, he went into, we going to read it right now. Let us read it together. Amen. In the word of God, the 26th and the 27th verse is here where the scriptures recorded. It says, when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, woman, amen, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. Amen. Amen. These scriptures, amen, are chosen out that out of the seven last things of Jesus Christ before, amen, he was crucified, before he died, amen, to give us, amen, a record of prophecy being fulfilled and that this was the very Christ that died for our sins. And I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that Jesus died for my sins, amen, because without the 
death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, as I said earlier, we would yet be in our sins. And that's what this season is all about. It's not all about, amen, getting a new suit and getting new clothes and new shoes. And if that, if that's what you want to do, that's all right. <laughs> but the true purpose for the season is to remember, amen, the death, amen, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, what he went through, huh? that we might be saved, amen. He didn't, amen, go through what he went through because of his own sin, but because we were born in sin. We were trapped, amen, on our way to hell, but Jesus, amen, he came, amen, to deliver us huh, from under the chains of the law huh, and liberate us, amen, hallelujah, through faith in his name huh, so that we could be reconciled back to the Father, huh? amen. It's exciting because, amen, amen, I have repented of my sins and I have, amen, been baptized in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I believe the account, amen, so therefore I'm here today and I'll be at church tomorrow, say amen, celebrating, amen, the resurrection, amen, of our Lord Jesus Christ because had he not rose from the dead, amen, we would have no hope of deliverance. We would have no hope of being set free. So, amen, we want to continue to cover, amen, in the word of God, what Jesus did for us. Here, amen, the second of his sayings that I have recorded here, amen, it says, Father, forgive them. Amen, turn with me to, amen, the book of the gospel according to St. Luke, amen, the 23rd chapter, amen, the 33rd through the 34th verse here, amen, we find, amen, these words, amen, recorded in the name of the Lord. Amen. The word of the Lord says, amen, that, amen, the other two male factors that were with him, and there were also two other male factors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then Jesus, then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots, and the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them. Amen. Jesus parted these words to those who blasphemously, amen, spit upon him. Amen. Amen. As the scriptures recorded, amen, they planted a crown of thorns and they pressed them upon his head. Amen. And he suffered. He laid down upon that cross as the scripture bears out. Amen. And they crucified him there. Not for crimes that he had done, not for sin that he had sin, but because amen, it was already written in scripture, it was already prophesied, amen, that he would die not only for the children of Israel, but Jesus would die, amen, for every man, woman, boy, and girl, and I'm so glad, amen, that he went through, amen, hallelujah, he could have come down from the cross, amen, he could have called 12 legions of angels and delivered himself, but it it was because of you and I. It was because he saw you and he wanted to deliver you that, amen, God, amen, he, amen, sacrificed his life, amen. And as he told Pilate, he said, I, amen, no man taketh my life from me, but I lay it down. I'm a willing sacrifice. And Jesus was not here to be God almighty, but he was here to be a prophet, a priest, and a sacrifice. And Jesus sacrificed sacrificed his life, uh, that you and I may have a right back to the tree of life, uh, so that we may have a right back to reconcile a broken relationship with the righteous God. Uh, oh, what a wonderful Savior we serve today. Uh, amen. The Bible said no man uh, would lay down his life, amen, for a friend, uh, but Jesus laid down his life for you. Uh, men who hated him, he died for them, uh, and he 
declared and said, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. Amen. And it shows us sometimes we have to forgive those who have wronged us, those who have, amen, done us wrong. Amen. Everything that Jesus did was for our learning. And he shows us how to navigate through our suffering and through, amen, the things that we must go through because the Bible says that through much tribulation must we enter the kingdom of God. So my brothers and sisters, there's some things that we have to go through. But if we look on the life of Jesus Christ, he shows us how to navigate our way through. He shows us how to suffer with him because the Bible declares they that suffer with him shall reign with him. Amen. Those that go through now, amen, they can be resurrected. They can enjoy the victory that only going through will provide. So amen, he says, Father, forgive them. Forgive them for punishing me. And you know that the Romans, amen, they were experts in torture. Amen, they beat my Jesus all night long. Amen, they whipped him and they whipped the skin off their back. History records the type of whips that they used. They had glass intertwined into the whip so that when it hit his back and they snatched the whip back that it would open his flesh up and it would rip away his skin. And this is all he done because of not sin that he done but the sins that I and you ignorantly done in unbelief. But Jesus laid down his life. He was not just whipped for a couple of hours but he was whipped and torn it all night long. But Jesus hung in there because he saw you and I and he saw a world that was about to die in sin and would spend eternity in a Christless hell. So my brothers and my sisters he shows us how to go through. And yes, amen, it's a gory story, but it's a real story, something that Jesus went through because, amen, he was declared in scripture to have all power. And the Bible says it pleased the Father to bruise him because on him he had laid the iniquity of us all. You can go back into, amen, hallelujah, the book of Isaiah, and it records, amen, the very words that I'm quoting today. It pleased the Father to bruise Jesus because he knew what it would take to redeem mankind. It would take sinless blood. It would take a perfect sacrifice, a sacrifice that you and I could not provide. But it took the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who was God in the flesh, who came down and suffered for you and I. Amen. And the beautiful part about it, he didn't, he's not only telling us, amen, how to, how to suffer, but he's showing us how to suffer, how to go through our tough times and how to come out with the victory. So Jesus, amen, speaks in his third saying, he says, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. These are the words that, amen, they have recorded as the seven last words of Jesus Christ while he suffered and while he suffered on the cross. Amen. Hallelujah. The male factors have began to look on him as they that stood by railed on him and said, if he be Christ the king, let him save himself. Let him come down from the cross. Not only did he suffer, but he had to, amen, go through, amen, those who ridiculed him and those who blasphemed his name. It's bad enough to suffer, but when you have somebody, amen, while you're suffering, taunting you and blaspheming you. Amen. But Jesus hung on because amen. He had the mission in mind and it was prophesied that he shall not fail. Oh, I'm so glad today that Jesus didn't fail, but he hung there on the cross. And amen. As amen, one of the male factors said, yeah, if you be the Christ, come down and save yourself and save us. Amen. As the scripture says, Let's turn to it. We have a little time this morning in the word of God, the gospel according to St. Luke.
Luke, the 23rd chapter, and the 43rd and the 44th verse, here we find these words recorded. It says, And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour, and the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. Here we see Jesus, amen, holiday dialoguing with those who were dying with him on the cross. Amen. And the other one, amen, he must have, amen, gathered, amen, some sense about himself and said, amen, we rightfully so are suffering for our sins. But this man, Jesus, he didn't do anything to be laid upon the cross. Amen. But yet he's suffering and he's not complaining. And he looked to him and said, Lord, amen, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus looked at him and said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He didn't go to heaven that day, but he went to the grave, the resting place. And he promised a young man that he would receive rest with him. Amen. When we pass from this life, amen. Hallelujah. We pass to rest, waiting on, amen, the resurrection. Amen. And it is my prayer that you'll be caught up in the first resurrection because the second resurrection doesn't have any power. So he promised him that he would be with him in paradise. And paradise is simply the grave. Jesus didn't go to heaven that day. So amen. He couldn't have took him to heaven. But Jesus went to the grave. He went to the grave for three days. Amen. And while he was in the grave. Amen. I don't know what day it was. Whether it was the first or the second day. But he went down into hell. And he ramshack hell. And amen. He went and snatched Satan up under the collar. And took the keys. Amen. Of 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 death, hell, and the grave. He set the captives free, those who died in the faith. And on the third day when he rose, those that were captive that he set free walked the streets of Jerusalem with him. Amen. Fulfilling scripture. Amen. That this was the very Christ. We have a great legacy to remember the day. Don't you let, amen, the blasphemers or the doubters of this day keep you from praising God for the resurrection because the resurrection is your deliverance for without the resurrection there is no salvation there is no reason to stand here as Paul said idle and preaching every day if there is no resurrection from the dead we're in the last hour saints and Satan is on his last leg and he's trying to amen take away the glory from what Jesus did on Calvary. He just didn't start now, but he's been started a long time ago. And this thing is for believers. It's not for those that don't believe. If you don't believe, it's not for you. But for those that believe, the Bible says, he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. This is for believers, those who through faith obtain the promise promises of God. I don't know about you, but amen, it was through faith that I believed on the finished work of Jesus Christ. Amen. It was the finished work of Jesus Christ that reconciled the world back to God. It gave us an opportunity to repent. It gave us an opportunity to turn from our sin and turn to salvation. And this is what all the noise is about, in case you didn't know. This is what all the noise is about. This is what all the praising is about. This is what all, amen, the poems are about and the shoutings are about. And I hope you'll make it to the house of God on tomorrow to remember what Jesus done. If you love him, you'll remember him. And that's one thing that I meditated on this morning, how that God set up the children of Israel with festivals and feasts so that they would never forget their deliverance out of Egypt. They had the Passover and the Feast of Weeks. Amen. And the different feasts so that they would be mindful. Amen. Of the country 
country that they were delivered from so that they would never return. But I would dare to say today, people are going back on God because they forgot how they were brought out of darkness. They forgot the resurrection. They forgot what Jesus done for them. So they have no other course but to return to where they have come from. But hey man, it's our job to keep you in mind. Amen. Peter said in the word of God, it's my job to stir up your pure minds uh, by way of remembrance um, to make you remember uh, that Jesus paid a heavy price, um, a price that no one could pay um, to deliver us from our sins. Um, And every week I gather here, sometimes I say, I'm not going to preach this morning. Um, I'm going to just sit here and read and teach. Um, But there's a fire that's burning down in my heart, um, down in my soul, because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me. My soul cries out, hallelujah, because he didn't come to save the righteous, but he came to save sinners, amen, from their sins. Jesus didn't come for the religious of his day, nor for the religious of our day, but Jesus came to save women, men, boys, and girls who are sinners. He didn't go to the temple and hang out at the temple, but he went to the streets of the city, amen, to heal, to save, to deliver, and to set free. And he fulfilled scripture all throughout his earthly ministry, even down to this time that we're recognizing today that Jesus said, amen, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Well, I want to tell you today, you can change your destiny. You don't have to go to hell. You don't have to stay in your sins. All you've got to do is repent of your sins for the remission of your sins, which is the removal of your sins. And God will fill your soul with the Holy Ghost. Amen. God will turn your situation around. Even as he turned that man's situation around. I believe something happened on that cross that day because you don't hear murmuring anymore. Amen. But Jesus took him to a peaceful death. Now, whether he was saved, I don't know. That's not my call. But I believe, amen, that he got a touch, amen, from God to help him through his struggle. And amen, Jesus offers that same touch today to those who want to be saved, to those who want to be delivered, to those who want to be set free. So here in Jesus for saying, amen, he says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And I can only imagine in my mind what Jesus was going through at that time. Amen. The feelings of abandonment. Amen. All of his disciples had abandoned him. They had ran away. Amen. Before fear of the Roman soldiers. They were fearing death. So they ran and left him. But amen. One important note I want to stick in there. That Jesus said, yet I'm not alone, but the Father is with me. He's going to help me through this. So Jesus wasn't alone, really. You just couldn't see his help. And you can't see your help sometime today. But Jesus felt the feelings of abandonment. The Bible said we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but who was tempted in all points, even as we are, but yet without sin. Jesus, he felt the feelings. He felt the pain. I want to let you know, though he was a man fully man, he was fully God. And he submitted himself to suffering. He submitted himself to pain. He submitted himself to be whipped. Amen. Because the scripture says, I lay down my life. Don't no man take my life from me. But I'm fulfilling the word of God. I'm, I'm, I've got power to lay it down I'm, and I've got power to take it again. I'm, oh, it makes me happy that he didn't die weak. I'm, but though he meant he 
seem weak um, on the outward appearance unto you. Um, the Bible said, yet he lives um, by the power of God. Um, oh, I can feel the Holy Ghost in this room this morning. Um, I can feel the anointing of God um, moving upon my soul um, because I remember the story. Um, I never shall forget how the fire fell. Um, I never shall forget my condition. Um, the condition that I was in before I met Jesus. I, I was in a bad place. I, but when I called on the name of Jesus, I, he delivered me from my sins. I, and he brought me into the kingdom of his dear son. I, so Jesus, amen, he shows us I, his suffering. He shows us I, how that we must suffer sometime. I, he shows us how to go through it. I, he shows us, amen, the agony that we have to deal with I, when we have to suffer for the name of Jesus. Um, we may have to cry sometime. Um, we may have trouble sometime. Um, but be of good cheer, Jesus told his disciples. Um, I have overcome the world. Um, Jesus has overcome everything. Um, and because he overcame it, um, we can overcome. Um, we can be victorious. Um, because our God that lives on the inside um, is victorious. Um, so he shows us how um, to get through our tough places in life. And he said, why God have you forsaken me? Why have you left me? Why did you leave me on the cross? Amen. But that was to show us, amen, the feelings, how we're going to feel sometime. He showed us that God will be there to help you through. And these are the last words that Jesus spoke before, amen, he gave up the ghost as recorded in scripture in the 50th verse and he simply went quiet amen but don't you know the devil wasn't finished with him he began amen to really get stirred up amen amen they filled a sponge full of vinegar and put it to his mouth and the bible says when he tasted thereof amen he said one of the last words amen it is finished amen turn with me to the gospel um, according to St. John for our fifth um, amen word of Jesus Christ um, amen in the gospel according to St. John um, amen we want to begin reading at the 19th chapter and the 30th verse um, here we find these words recorded um, amen it says when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar he said it is finished and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost amen hallelujah the work was finished even after that he took a spear that was a spear took it and was shoved in his side and and out came blood and water he went through it for you and I saints amen that we might have a right back to the tree of life and I'm so glad that I answered the master's call I'm so glad that I'm able to remember today um, that Jesus died on Calvary's cross, um, that he died for a sinner, he died for a wretch like me. Um, amen. Honey, it was no good that I have done um, that made me deserving um, for the grace of God, um, but Jesus went through it. Um, amen. Also, the scripture said, bears out, he said that I thirst, um, and that's when they gave him vinegar. Um, also, after that, amen, the scripture was noted out in the book of Luke. He said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. A total committing of himself to God. Amen. He shows us amen that sometimes when we're trying to find a way out of our suffering, when we're searching for deliverance and deliverance just won't come, sometimes you got to turn yourself over to God and put yourself in the hands of God and everything is going to be all right. Oh, I'm so glad that I have this great example today um, in the word of God and I hope and it, it is amen it is encouraging to you to make you get up on tomorrow um, and make it to the house of God to remember what Jesus done um, for you because Jesus done what man could not do um, amen David said my mother and my father forsook me um, but then the Lord took me up Jesus will amen he will take you up when others put you down um, amen he'll be 
your last resource huh, when all of your resources failed. Huh? And I don't know why sometimes we've got to take the long road in huh, while Jesus is the last choice. Huh? But maybe that's what's needed for us. Huh? Amen. To understand huh, that Jesus, amen, is the only answer huh, to our human dilemma in this life. Huh? He's the only answer to every situation that we are facing. Huh? He's the only answer huh, to the sin question that rattles our minds. Huh? How do I get out of this sin situation? Huh? How do I get the victory huh, over the thing that has me bound? Huh? Amen. How do I get the victory huh, over what I've been striving and crying and pressing over all of these years? Huh? But Jesus has power huh, to deliver from sin, self and Satan. Huh? He has power huh, and he gives us victory. Huh? Amen. So I'm so glad that I, amen, I have this account here in the word of God for you. Huh? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that I have this account to share and I'm so glad that I don't let that old man fool me not to remember what Jesus done for me. Don't let any man take away from you what Jesus did for you. Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to you. Amen. Jesus made sacrifices for you that no one else could make. And that's why it's worthy to give up everything for Jesus. Don't let your little habits of sin keep you from the God that gave up everything so that you might be blessed, so that you might be healed, so that you might be delivered. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. The Bible said, why stand we here gazing? Why stand we here all day if the dead don't rise? Why do we stand here protesting and preaching if it's not real? But this is real, saints. It's real, everybody. It's real. It's enough. Amen. And it's worthy. Amen. To give your life for. Amen. I gave up my life and the things that I was bound to. And I was delivered. Amen. Over 30 years. And I thank God that I don't have a mind to even look back to them. Amen. Nonetheless, go back to them, but not even look back to them because they're not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. So, amen. I want to encourage you today. I want to take the time today just to, amen, spend time in Scripture and share with you. I know that you'll hear this sermon over and over again as we celebrate this season, but no matter how many times the story has been told, it will never grow old with me, because without Jesus' sacrifice, I would still be in my sin. I don't even know whether I would be here, and the thoughts, amen, surround my mind that if I hadn't got saved, if Jesus hadn't saved me when he did, I wouldn't be here. I would be lost, amen, amen. I wouldn't even be on this earth, amen. I would be, amen, on schedule to stand before God with no answer for why I didn't repent and why I didn't get ready. But, amen, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the time to get it right. While the blood is running warm in your veins, while you have breath in your lungs, take advantage of the time that God has given you to get it right with God. There's nothing on this earth worth going hell, going to hell over. There's nothing worth, amen, giving up the pleasures, amen, that Jesus could, amen, bless your life with. Because he just not only comes to bless us in the afterlife, but the Bible says he'll give us a hundredfold in this life and then eternal life to come. If you live right, heaven belongs to you. Amen. If you give up now, if you die now, you won't have to die no more. Amen. Hallelujah. If you die to sin, you won't have to die for sin. Amen. That's what we do now. When we come and give our life to God, we die to sin. We don't die for sin because it's been paid for through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Why make a double payment on something you don't have to? Your sin has already been 
been paid for. But the requirement is to repent. And to repent simply means to turn. To turn from your evil and your wicked ways, which we all have. Amen. There is, amen, no tag that we put on sin that makes one no worse than the other. Amen. And there's no big sin and no little sin in the eyes of God. Because sin is a transgression of the law. Amen. And all sin and transgression will be judged. And you don't have to die that way. Jesus died so that we could escape. Amen. The damnation of hell. We could escape the penalty of walking in sin. You don't have to die like you are. I know your situation tells you to give up, but don't give up. Look to the hills from which come of your help because all of your help it comes from the Lord that made heaven and earth. Repentance is real. Just as your sin, just as your torture is real, repentance and forgiveness is real. Jesus can set you free. And that's what this season is all about. It's all about looking back at what liberated me and what liberated mankind from sin. It was the sacrifice. Jesus died so you don't have to die. Jesus suffered so you don't have to suffer. Now, if you make a choice to suffer, that's your choice. <laughs> Amen. But you don't have to. <laughs> you simply have to repent. <laughs> amen. And repent, amen, is to acknowledge that I've sinned. I've done wrong in the sight of God. <laughs> and turn from it and turn to Jesus. <laughs> amen. I promise you <laughs> that if you really give it to God, <laughs> if you really turn it over to God, <laughs> Jesus will make it a part of your eternal past. <laughs> he won't bring it up. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Let us turn to the book of Romans while I'm in this vein today. <laughs> Amen. Because here Paul simplifies <laughs> a complicated situation. <laughs> I keep telling myself I'm going to preach that one day. <laughs> How God simplifies <laughs> A complicated situation. Um, you know how you go on Facebook <laughs> and you look at folks' relationship status. <laughs> they say it's complicated <laughs> because it ain't right in the eyes of God. <laughs> Amen. Honey, they don't want to go explaining something that they can't explain. <laughs> it's just sin. <laughs> Amen. There is no excuse. <laughs> but why <laughs> do you have to stay in that situation? <laughs> it's not complicated. <laughs> Jesus simplified that complicated situation in your life. Amen. He can pick you up and turn you around. In the book of Romans, the sixth chapter, turn with us here as Paul, amen, amen, pleads, amen, to, amen, the Roman church and the people of his day. And he has a word for us today. Amen. The Bible says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? that grace may abound. Amen. He's talking to new believers, those who had just given their life over. Amen. I'm here to tell you when you give your life to God, it's for good. Don't go I'm giving your life to God and then turn around and go back. Amen. Why? Because there ain't nothing worth going back for. Amen. Honey, he says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. I'm here to tell you that you don't have to, amen, be bound to the life that you are living. Amen. You can walk in a new life. If you give your life to God, a life that is, amen, amen, laden with the blessings of God. I'm not here to tell you that you ain't going to have struggles, but Jesus will be there to help you through your struggles. Amen. You won't be left to try to figure it out on your own. Amen. I see so many people and I encounter so many people, amen, with problems in their life, but they don't have the humility to bring that problem to Jesus. Um, they just keep on trying to work it out themselves. Um, they just keep on struggling with it. Um, 
Amen. But I'm here to tell you that the Bible is a cheat sheet. <laughs> All you got to do is pick it up and look at it. <laughs> It'll tell you what to do. <laughs> Amen. To get rid of your dilemma today. <laughs> and all you got to do is turn it over to Jesus. <laughs> amen. Sounds complicated, but it's not. <laughs> all you have to do, amen, is turn it over to God. <laughs> Take your hands off of it and give it to a God that can do something about it. <laughs> you can't do nothing about it. If you could, you've been done something with it a long time ago. <laughs> but amen, God stands ready <laughs> to deliver on time. That's what the resurrection is about. <laughs> it's about deliverance. <laughs> it's about liberation. It's about freedom. <laughs> Paul says, stand fast, Christians, in the liberty. <laughs> We've been liberated from sin. <laughs> he says, stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. <laughs> and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. <laughs> if Christ has set you free, why do you want to get back in it again? <laughs> if you've been brought out, why do you want to get entangled again? <laughs> Into something that took all almost took your very mind from you. You almost went crazy to get out of what you were in because you couldn't do it and you cried to God and God delivered you. Why would you go back? Amen. The song says, I don't want to go back. My God's been good to me. Jesus has set me free. Oh, I don't want to go back. Don't want to go back to what God has delivered me from. Don't want to go back to what I've been set free from. I already know what's waiting for me there. There's no surprise. Amen. But the Bible says every round goes higher and higher. And as we walk by faith, God will reveal himself to us. He'll open our hearts and our minds and he'll show us things that are, amen, we can only imagine. Amen. You've heard the song, I can only imagine what it will be like when I stand in heaven. Amen. And behold the sun. I can only imagine what God has planned for us because the Bible says, I have not seen, neither have ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. And Jesus loves you and he has made preparation for you. Amen. He's made, he's gone away. Amen. Over 2,000 years ago to prepare a place for you that where he is, you may be also. So the word God, so if we have been planted together in the fifth verse, in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is freed from sin, amen, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. You don't have to die no more if you die with him now. Amen. If you give up and die now, you won't have to die no more. And again, we die to sin. We don't die for sin because the price for sin has been paid. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. How that we don't have to die for our sins. All you got to do is repent of them and forsake them. Amen. The Bible says, hating the garment that was spotted by the flesh <laughs> and give God your full attention and turn to him and serve him with all of your heart and all of your mind and all of your strength. Amen. I'm going to share just a few more scriptures here. Amen. Because our time is fleeting. Amen. But we want to make sure that we give you a word to encourage you. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Our last verse, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Amen. Hallelujah, Paul. Amen. The word of God gives us, amen, hallelujah, amen, his word to, amen, be able to see that he offers us the newness of life. We don't have to stay the way we are. 
We don't have to stay in the condition that we are. Amen. Jesus paid the price on Calvary's cross to set you free. Amen. If you are not free, it's because you don't want to be free. It's not because Jesus can't set you free. Amen. Come to Jesus while you have time. Amen. To all of my friends that are out there, amen, in the foreign fields and amen, that are scattered abroad throughout the United States, amen, turn to Jesus with all of your heart. <laughs> and this message, amen, amen, in this day and time, amen, amen, is just not confined, amen, to preaching to, amen, the world and sinners, but amen, shame, amen, but sadly so we have to, amen, preach this word, amen, to the household of faith. Because many, amen, are in the building, but they're looking back. Amen. And I challenge you today. Amen. What are you looking back for? <laughs> you know what's back there for. Because everyone that Jesus saved was a sinner. Jesus said, I come, I come to seek and to save that which is lost. <laughs> All that ever has come before me are thieves and robbers. Amen. Jesus came to save sinners in which we were all, Paul said, in whom I am chief. <laughs> Amen. Jesus came to deliver. He came to save. He came to heal. You don't have to be sick. You don't have to be in pain. You don't have to, amen, suffer, amen, the way you are, because God has offered a remedy through our Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm so glad that I answered the master's call today. I'm so glad that I have the answer down on the inside. Amen. That I believe that I'm running for my life. <laughs> Amen. I realize that there is nothing worth going to hell over. There's nothing worth my salvation. <laughs> Amen. It may look good on the outside, but it's not worth giving up. Amen. My Jesus for. Because I know that if I hold on to the end, the Bible said the same shall be saved. I'm, I'm in this to go all the way. <laughs> Amen. I'm not in this to go back from whence I came <laughs> because I already know what I left. <laughs> and sin is a transgression of the law. There's nothing that this world can offer you that could win out what God is offering you. Amen. So my friends, my brothers and my sisters, I want to encourage you today. Amen. Hallelujah. Flee from the wrath to come. Because so much is happening now. And it's a fulfillment of the word of God. We're not surprised because God has already forewarned us of what is coming. Amen. Death is running rampant. Amen. And some of it, amen, is to warn us to get in line. And some of it is to, amen, uh, amen, is a fulfillment of God's word. This is what's going to happen because God said it. Amen. God, amen, has already spoken it. And the Bible says his words shall not return void. Amen. So, amen. We want to encourage you to be saved. Amen. We want you to encourage you to remember what Jesus done for you. That's what this season is all about. Amen. It ain't about Easter bunnies and chocolate. We know that we have children. And the Bible said when I was a child, I understood as a child. Amen. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. <laughs> We have to be able to deal with children where they are. They're children. They don't understand what you understand. Amen. All they see is the fun in it. But it's our job to teach them the truth and to show them that Jesus is the reason for this season and this time. Amen. I'm so glad that I've had this time to spend with you. Amen. And if you don't have a church home, amen. Hallelujah. Come over. Amen. And you're in the Washington, D.C. area. Amen. Come on out to the Greater Refuge Temple Church of our Lord Jesus Christ, where our pastor is the Honorable Bishop William Michael Fields. Amen. Amen. Where the Word of God is being preached, where you'll be baptized in that wonderful name, Lord Jesus Christ. And we'll tarry with you until God fills you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. We'll teach you how to live victoriously, <laughs> how to walk in the newness of life. <laughs> Amen. How, amen, to get the victory. Amen. In this life. Because if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Amen. Our service to God <laughs> goes beyond this life. Our reward from God goes beyond the reward in this life. He promised to bless us here, but the greater blessing is on the other side. Amen. Hallelujah. If you have need of prayer, 
Amen. Our hotline number is 240-719-2560. Call and we'll pray with you. Amen. We'll wait. Amen. We'll wait and pray for you that God will deliver. Amen. The Bible says if there's any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he have sinned any sin, it shall be forgiven. Oh, God offers you a remedy. He offers you a promise. Amen. He is the God that heal of all of your infirmities. He has the answer to life's, amen, most difficult questions. <laughs> amen. This system does not have our deliverance. <laughs> amen. This world is not our home. <laughs> amen. We are passing through to another life. Be ready when the Lord calls your number. Be ready, amen, when the Lord, amen, decides to bring you home, amen, because we all got to travel this road. Be ready if the Lord shall crack the sky, amen. Be ready when he comes because, amen, there will be no time to get ready. The Bible says that the lightning flashes from the east to the west, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. There won't be time to repent. You've got to get it right now. Amen. While the blood is running warm in your veins, while you have time to repent, while you have time to turn, amen, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. We hope that, amen, something was said, amen, that will encourage you, amen, to, amen, seek the Lord while he may be found and call on him while he's near, amen. We're praying with you and praying for you. And again, meet us here next Saturday, amen. And let, amen, those that are convalescing, amen, in nursing facilities that have access, amen, to smartphones and laptops and computers, let them know, amen, that the prayer, praise, and deliverance broadcast is on the air on Saturday from 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock where they can get a word from the Lord. Amen. That's why, amen, a, a great reason of why I'm here today. I want to be able to share a word with those who may not be able to make it out to church. <laughs> amen. That may need a word of encouragement. <laughs> amen. Let them know, amen, those that are behind prison walls that may have access, <laughs> amen, to the word of God, to a computer. Just, amen, dial, amen, type in and pull up voxvoxwave.com on Saturday from 11 to 12 o'clock, amen, where they can get a word from the Lord. We also have, amen, an Android app that you can pull down from free from the Play Store on your phones, voxwave.com, that you can, amen, pull up, amen, and just at any time, click on the app during the time of our broadcast, and you'll be able to pull us up. Amen. There are other preachers and ministers of the gospel that are here preaching the word of God. Amen. Where you can get an encouraging word. Well, finally, amen. We want to say unto you, be encouraged, my brothers. Be encouraged, my sisters. Amen. Hold on to God's unchanging hand because he will neither fail nor forsake us. He will go with us all the way, even to the end of the world. And until we meet again, God bless you in the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, and we'll continue to pray for you. God bless you.